from 24th September to 6th October 2018, the African Union Youth Volunteer Corp, the 9th batch training, was held in Kigali, Rwanda. The pre-deployment training has convened 90 volunteers from all parts of Africa, mainly in the member of African Union. The very essence of this training was to upskill volunteers and empower them with enough pragmatic knowledge in order to inspire them on how to become prolific volunteers. Honorable Harerimana Nasiriak, alongside with the Minister of Information, Technology and Communications, Rangir Gwajan Dieu, and the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Youth, Bijenimana Emmanuel, have launched this training at Senetra Hotel in Kigali on 25th September 2018. Honorable Minister of State in Ministry of Local Government say that one of the main objectives of the African Union is to support youth. The reason why Rwanda, as a member of African Union, has praised the idea of holding this training in Kigali. This training, attended by the youth from over 40 countries of this continent, will help them to adopt good behaviors towards volunteerism services that they will provide in countries where they will be deployed soon. It will also help them share information, ideas about leadership in the countries and figure out how they can develop our continent in order to fight against poverty, instability and diseases in a sustainable way. The Minister of Information, Technology and Communications, Rurangir Gwajando Dieu, has insisted in showing these volunteers the opportunities of mainstreaming ICT in every aspect of this digital world. The Youth Connect, Igamije uh, Ahanini, guha amahirwe urubyiruko no gushyiraho urubuga rutuma urubyiruko rushobora kubona amahirwe yo kubona kazi ndetse by'umwihariko rukaba rwagira as you know youth connect africa has been the platform for young people to get connected to share views and experience it is also a clear way of using ICT as opportunity. You don't need to take them for granted. Make more profit from this digital world that has provided the clear way for you to grab opportunities, for instance, in most of our countries. Mr. Adunya Daniel, the African Union Youth Volunteer Corp officer, highlighted the importance of this training and the reason why Rwanda was chosen to host the ninth batch. Uh, young people are coming here for a training, uh, for, to prepare them for the journey as youth volunteers. Uh, when they finish this training, they're going to go uh, and serve for a period of 12 months as uh, African Union ambassadors, young leaders uh, representing their country to serve the continent. Uh, the main purpose is that they are not going to be serving in the country of their origin. That means somebody from Rwanda, would go to another country for a period of 12 months and this training is uh, to prepare them. So the training focuses on key three uh, concepts or philosophies. The first one is of course Pan-Africanism under the African Union umbrella. Uh, we're talking about youth empowerment and development and the third concept we are learning here is about volunteerism and the spirit of service. Uh, coming to Rwanda of course is not by coincidence or not by accident. Uh, as you all know, uh, Rwanda currently, His Excellency Paul Kagame is the chair of the African Union. Uh, but also, Rwanda is one of the few countries that allowed, following the free movement protocol, to assign visa on arrival for all African citizens. So this is partly also celebrating and uh, Pan-Africanism together with our brothers and sisters from Rwanda and learning from each other and also taking it to the rest of the continent as a excellent example and promoting it across Africa. Honorable Minister of Youth, Babazi Rosemary, addressed the African Union Youth Volunteers during their training program before being deployed to different African countries. She urged them to always stay focused and united and to think about Africa first, as they are the biggest hope of Africa's development and good leadership. The key message I would give to these young people who are going on mission, they are sent on mission, to always remember Africa first. Before you think about yourself, think about Africa. Africa first. When Africa is well, when if all is well in Africa, 
it means even yourselves, it all is well. Uh, I would also ask them to always stay united. Always look for, don't look for differences, instead look for something that unite or bring you together because what will make us a different or that will create Africa more different from the past generations and the coming and the future is to stay united. And uh, also to think beyond the usual differences, but stay united because there are many differences anyway. Even within a family, there would be differences. But if we stay focused and united, all the mission they are going for will be possible. The UN resident coordinator in Rwanda for the NDIA said that he is expecting a lot from these African Union volunteers to be the ones to bring solutions to Africa's problems. He added that, basing on the energy and commitment he observed from them, he is confident that this is going to be achieved in the near future. I'm truly confident. It was an amazing afternoon. I think I have seen young people committed for the continent with a purpose in life. People wanted excellence. People wanted skills. People wanted to get involved. Innovators, creative. Uh, I'm really amazed by also their question, their quest for hope, their quest uh, for the continent in rise. That's why I say that if the youth of the continent stay committed for the continent of youth, nothing is impossible for Africa. Chairman of National Itori Rokwa Morichi Edward addressed the African Union Young Volunteers on volunteerism spirit basing on Rwanda's experience. He told them that in Rwanda, volunteerism is a culture and a value that contributes to socio-economic development. So, teaching values, culture, and uh, history, it's one part of giving ideology to the young people and to the people who attend Victoria. But putting the values into practice it's more about action. So what we do, so we build houses for poor, so we build feeder roads for people to, to, to be connected. So we use the knowledge that we got from, the, from school, together with these values, to give back to the society. Volunteers benefited from different rational lessons, among them, are the concept of Pan-Africanism, Afrocentricity, and Black Consciousness. Honorable Musoni Prote, the chairman of Pan-African Movement Rwanda Chapter, shared wise words with volunteers and urged them to never agonize but always organize. In addition to lessons learned by African Union volunteers during this pre-deployment training, the African Union volunteers had time to do some practical exercises that had significant meaning and lessons behind, like teamwork, stepping stones, writing Africa, and more others. Volunteers shared lessons learned. Briefly explain the exercise. It's just like we have a lake, and all of the team, the entire team needs to cross the lake, but there is a crocodile, so we need to cross the lake at the same time, all together, without leaving anybody behind, while at the same time using limited resources, which are, in this case, boats. But you need to be creative, finding a solution to this problem, and at the same time, teamwork and be collectively trying to solve this problem. And as you can see, like, the team are doing a great job, they are happy, they are singing, because we have managed to cross everybody without having our boats taken. And what happened is that we got more limited resources, so we needed to find creative ways of solving the problem. And communication also was a big challenge, but then when we have a clear idea and we needed to achieve a clear mission and clear objective, we ended up uh, getting to the place that we wanted to be. This activity makes you solve problems, think critically, and at the same time think in a team and be a member and an active member of a team. So it's a, it's a good exercise to create a team spirit. Alors là, on a formé une équipe d'à peu près une vingtaine de personnes. On devait pénétrer, euh, traverser la rive en se servant des bateaux. Malheureusement, on n'avait que, enfin, vraiment pas beaucoup de bateaux, sachant qu'on est 20 personnes. Alors, le challenge était de pouvoir arriver de l'autre côté de la rive euh, avec ce matériel-là, sachant qu'il y avait des crocodiles dans l'eau et qu'on pouvait euh, justement se noyer ou mourir. Le challenge était de pouvoir survivre et de faire en sorte que toute l'équipe puisse accéder euh, de l'autre côté. 
Alors, euh, après plusieurs tentatives, parce que c'était assez difficile, euh, on a élaboré un plan et on s'est dit qu'il fallait euh, se servir euh, des bateaux euh, en mettant plusieurs personnes à l'intérieur. Donc c'est ça, ça a été ça notre stratégie, il fallait communiquer, il fallait être patient, être sûr que tout le monde était à bon port euh, pour pouvoir arriver à nos fins. Dans un premier temps, la communication, comprendre ce qui se passe, euh, prendre, de, prendre soin des autres, donc un peu d'altruisme, savoir ce qui se passe. Euh, même On forme une équipe, c'est-à-dire que si une personne coule, toute l'équipe coule. Là, l'enjeu, c'était justement d'être uni et... Euh, d'arriver à nos fins de cette façon-là. We learned about self-awareness. In order to be a great leader, you need to to know yourself first so that you be able to lead other people. So I really learned a lot about um, how I can know my values and elaborate them and clearly state them in order to help me then follow them on a daily basis. My biggest take-home message is that a leader, a great leader, is that one that take all the blames and then Uh, share all the credits with his followers and another thing is that a great leader is that one that say let's do it and not do it so a great leader gives elaborate a vision and then help his followers to own the vision and then uh, create the commitment and then help them to to achieve together their vision uh, en fait, j'ai tiré trois messages le premier message est que euh, le leadership c est, c est, est en relation avec le leader, la vision, mais aussi par rapport au suiveur. Euh, les, les, les suiveurs ressemblent à leur leader. Le leadership, c'est toujours une étude perpétuelle. Donc, c'est une leçon qui ne s'arrête jamais. Et pour avoir des aptitudes d'un leader, il faut comprendre, avoir la notion de la compréhension et de l'étude de tous les jours. On a essayé un peu de rallier que les valeurs euh, font partie de l'intimité même du leader. Un leader sans caractère, sans valeur, c'est un leader qui n'aboutit jamais, qui, est, qui a des difficultés à mener un peuple. The African Union volunteers had time to visit Rwanda. They paid tribute to victims of the 1994 genocide against Tutsi, buried in Kigali Genocide Memorial Center. They also visited the Campaign Against Genocide Museum at Rwanda Parliament. Having studied the genocide in Rwanda, which happened in 1994 in Musanze district, one-stop border post between Rwanda and Congo, Grand Barrière, also known as La Corniche, and Petite Barrière. They also visited other touristic areas and some hotels. While in Rwanda, the African Union volunteers joined citizens of Rusororo sector, whereby they participated in the monthly community work. Volunteers say that they appreciated the spirit and culture of Rwandans and they learned a lot from the community work. The experience of the Omaganda is, is very good for me. I have learned a lot of things. I have learned like the concept of solidarity, how people are helping each other to achieve one thing. And I, I have learned like the, the team working and like that there is no difference between that one and that one and also the collaboration on building projects is good and i'm sure that rwanda after the next 10 years it will be one of the best city, uh, the best countries in the world thank you cette expérience que j'ai pu appris ici aujourd'hui c'est que nous les africains on doit s'unir ensemble pour s'entraider et aider les plus pauvres pour pouvoir aller de l'avant j'espère que en revenant dans mon pays Je peux commencer à instaurer ces arts des choses no. dans mon pays. And I've learned a lot of things. I've learned how to be able to actually work within the community, to be able to achieve something uh, very efficient, and um, it's excellent. And uh, yeah, I feel uh, there's a lot of joy within me, especially when you give to people. And uh, all the best to all the Rwandans. Generally, the participants define this training as a milestone to their journey of developing their continent and will grasp this unparalleled opportunity. One of the most important um, lessons I've learned is, um, okay, we have started with uh, what is our role as um, 
as uh, AU uh, youth volunteer. So probably uh, later on we will be uh, joining um, an organization or a group. So we will find ourselves uh, like we are working in a group. So um, how uh, when actually you are working in a group, it's possible that uh, there are different kinds of people in a group with different behavior, um, coming up with different attitude, different things. So um, how can you manage those differences? If you are like put as a leader in a group, how can you effectively manage those things? So to be um, effective and successful in a given project, because all of those groups are working toward the same goal, it's important that you manage those differences uh, to achieve um, a common goal. We have mentioned a lot of problems uh, that can cause uh, mental health problems to us. So one of the things uh, that specifically for instance we have discussed in our group was that uh, most of the time we keep to, uh, we tend to keep things to ourselves only. Um, so yeah, it may depend on people's behavior, but it's, it's always important to share um, at least with someone uh, the problems you have and how you can solve. Maybe you have one uh, idea or two ideas how to solve it, but always when you have more friends and when you discuss it with more people, it's possible that you can have more solutions too. Generally speaking, if I can just combine it into um, one uh, point, it's that uh, you must always find your voice within the organization but also not to step on other people's toes while you're doing your work. So you have to maintain, um, let's say, a good relationship with your colleagues and uh, your, your superiors, your supervisors. So it's very important to keep a culture of uh, interconnectivity. You know, if, for example, you don't know what your terms of reference are, it's going to be quite hard to do your job. So it's important to read and thoroughly know your responsibilities. And um, that way, I guess, uh, just try to be a person that people can rely on, uh, be trustworthy, and be able to keep sensitive information within the organization and not share it with your friends on Facebook or on, uh, on WhatsApp. We've been here for two weeks, two successful weeks. Uh, we believe we have achieved what we came here to do. Uh, we came here to establish the basic foundations of what the AUIVC program is all about. And I think that has been successfully communicated uh, or we succeeded in transmitting it to the young people. Uh, after this is actually where the real work begins. It's where the role of the AUU's volunteers itself is. Uh, immediately from now, they would start matching them with different organizations where they would be deployed um, and they would be serving for a period of 12 months. So starting from now, and mostly in the year 2019, they would be going to different countries of the continent, uh, most importantly, country other than their own. So Rwandese would go to other African countries uh, for a period of 12 months, would be attached to different offices, the African Union and other similar organizations, and they would be working as professional young volunteers in their respective fields of expertise. On 5th October 2018, African Union volunteers were privileged to meet His Excellency Paul Kagame, the President of the Republic of Rwanda, who is also the Chairman of the African Union. He told them that volunteerism is a matter of choice and gave them Rwanda Patriotic Army's example. For you young people to be able to try and think differently and do things different from how we have been doing it ourselves. Yeah. Do better than us. That's when Africa will change. Don't ever lose hope and think that the situation is helpless, is hopeless. And so all you can do is surrender. Never surrender to problems. Volunteers said that the take-home message from His Excellency Paul Kagame was so rich and they hope to lean on it so that they fulfill their duties at field. I was very happy and excited to see Mr. President Paul Kagame and also the discussion was very amazing and fruitful and we have covered a lot of things related to what address youth in, in Africa and also like some in general topic that the, the African Union are interested to solve in Africa. The whole thing that Mr. President have covered so far is we as a youth are the responsible people to make 
change in our continent and create the Africa we want. Yeah, I'm one of the people who can contribute in the change of our continent. The message, the one I took really, really was where he said, we shouldn't keep on passing the old button. That's the one from the colonial masters and we keep on using it now and that is why Africa as, as a continent is stagnated. But we as the young people, we are the new agents of change for our society for now and for the future as our anthem says. And that we should create a new stick that we will pass on to our future generations to come. After this training, the African Union volunteers will attend a three days Youth Connect Summit to be held in Kigali Convention Center. The African Union Youth Volunteer Corp 9th Badge was attended by 90 youth, among them 42 are men and 48 are women, all from 45 African countries. Among these trainees, 15 come from Rwanda. <laughs> 